We are working on a uh, Honda Accord with a V6, J-Series Honda V6. This also cover your Odysseys, your Pilots, your Ridgelines, Accords, your Acura CLs, your Acura TLs, uh, anything with the Honda J-Series V6 engine in it. I've seen a lot of videos where guys will go ahead and take all this snorkel off and everything to get the uh, plenum off. You don't have to do that. There's uh, two 12 millimeter nuts right here. There's two 12 millimeter bolts on the bottom. All you gotta do is take those off, take the uh, bolts off, take the nuts off. The one on the far side doesn't actually come off all the way. You just take those off, take these off as well. Um, let's see, you have a vacuum line right back here. Sorry for the, for the nasty light. You have to unplug this sensor back here. You have two 10 millimeter, two 10 millimeter bolts hold this uh hold this on you gotta take off and then uh you're able to get to the fuel injectors the fuel injector rails you can actually see them right here there's one here there's one here these plenum bolts are 12 millimeter these are 12 millimeter and the bolts down there are 12 millimeter you have three nuts two nuts here one nut there three in total first thing i'll do is i'll remove this vacuum hose way back here loosen up all these 12 millimeters I could be using air tools to show you guys this, but I wanted to show you guys that anybody can do this with minimal tools. You don't have to invest in air tools to do this. We have my handy dandy magnetic mesh bowl that I got from Grip Tools. Very handy, I like this thing. You can just chuck your bolts and nuts into there. Get that out of the way. 12 millimeter on the throttle body. So I already took the, I've already taken off the uh, bolts on the bottom so there's just these two nuts that are holding it on but you'll, you'll see the principle here in a second you don't have to take any of the throttle body or the coolant lines to go to the throttle body that's just a waste of time no need to do that no need at all okay we're almost ready to pull this thing off we have this uh, vacuum line to deal with here two 10 millimeter bolts hold this on and then there's a, a steel flange or a steel gasket you have to make sure you have as well when you uh, take it off don't lose it back here and try not to drop your nuts or bolts back behind the firewall so you guys can see what i'm doing taking off this vacuum line this vacuum line actually goes to the uh, brake booster there's one 10 millimeter so then you pull that back here's your metal gasket make sure you put that back on when it's time to uh, when it's time to put everything back together, there's only one way it fits. There's a little notch right here. That notch goes that way. With your left hand, come all the way over here. Make sure everything's clear. My vacuum line's clear. Your left hand way over here. Pull this up. Clear the studs and pull the uh, plenum towards the uh, passenger side. You're free and clear. Here's your plenum gasket. You can typically reuse this if it's not cut or broken, damaged anyway. Go ahead and reuse it. Next thing I'll do, you can either get a rag or I got a bunch of uh, paper towels here. Six paper towels to be exact. Each one goes into the intake runner because you don't want any bolts or nuts or any foreign debris falling down in here because it goes right into the, the valves or right here. It would really lead right into the cylinder, so you don't want to mess with that at all. Here are your two fuel rails. One here, one here. Your fuel injectors are right here. These are your connectors for your fuel injectors. Now, if you're doing all six of them, you could do, uh, you do them ex exactly at the same time. Right down here, and I'll show you in a second. Right here, here, right here, right here, on the back side as well, corresponding. There's um, two. One's right here. The other one is right there. Our two 8mm bolts. There's one right there where my finger's pointing. There's another one right down there. These two front ones are very easy. These two back ones are a pain. So I'm gonna show you what I did to get that out. This has saved my life uh, many a times. So, sorry if you can't see it, it's kind of weird reflection. It's from Sears, it's Craftsman three piece socket cap set. Looks like part number is 943303. You can pick it up uh, at, at Sears, at Craftsman. Piece set includes quarter inch, three eighths and half inch socket. So this thing allows you to do, okay, so way back here, there's a, 
one of the wiring harnesses is in the way. So you got to get an eight millimeter short and you put it onto the eight millimeter back here under the rail. There's no room to get a wobbly or an extension or put your socket back there. So then what you do is you take the quarter millimeter, the quarter inch adapter, you put it onto your eight millimeter socket and then it allows you to take a wrench. This isn't the right size, but you'll get the, you'll get the concept. You take the wrench and you're able to turn the socket and the bolt as one, as one piece, as one unit. And that's how you get this back one on the passenger side out. I was able to get a, um, a socket and a narrow wrench, if you want to call it, narrow ratchet from Harbor Freight back there for the other one. This is the one that I used on this side. So this is a quarter inch. This is three eighths. It allows you to get in there nice, in the nice and tight spots and break it loose. I'll put, I'll put a link in the description below for this and for the Craftsman, uh, Craftsman adapter. The front fuel rail is pretty easy to, to take apart. So if you're doing both sides, take out the two or the four eight millimeter bolts, and then this thing just pops up bloop, and out of the way, and that way you can change out the, the fuel injector. I'm actually just gonna take the front one, up, front one out. So right here, we have a 10 millimeter right here. You have a 10 millimeter right there. You have to break those loose. Right here's the fuel line that goes into the fuel rail. There's an O-ring in there. There's an O-ring in there as well. And you pop this off, you pop that one off, you lift this fuel rail straight up and out. And so break that loose. Don't lose these down, don't lose these nuts down there. There's one 10 millimeter. Here's another. Right here is your fuel pressure regulator. It's pretty tight back there, so I got me a putty knife. Just pull it loose like that. Get up and out of the way. And don't smoke when you're doing this because you're working around gas. Those are all free and clear. Pull that a little bit out. Put your putty knife in there. Try not to damage the aluminum. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Also, it's a good idea if you have a magnet to get a magnet to be able to pick anything up that falls into the valley on the engine. It's probably the hardest part of the whole job, taking these four eight millimeter bolts out. Honda likes to use their eight, 10, 12s, 14s, 17s, 19s. Please don't let me drop that. Please don't let me drop that. There's the other one, eight millimeter bolt. Take your left hand, take your right hand, get your connectors all off, pull it straight up. There are your fuel injectors for your Honda V6, Acura V6. So there's O-rings right here on the bottom, right? See these O-rings? Make sure that these are actually on the fuel injectors when you take them off, because if they get stuck down here in the hole, you gotta get them out before you put, uh, put the new one in. Same with this O-ring right here as well. O-ring here, O-ring here, and then up in the fuel rail itself, there's an O-ring as well. There's an O-ring right here, and then this cap, it's like a little filter. You gotta get that out too, or make sure that's in there. All right, let me get the new one. I'll show you down here real quick. Those are the holes that the injectors go into. Make sure there's free of any O-ring, O-ring material or O-ring itself. Here is the brand new beautiful BWD injector from O'Reilly Auto Parts. 63840 is the part number, injector. Brand new, comes with a lifetime warranty. Comes with several different gaskets as well, or O-rings. So then you have three options when it comes to O-ring. This green one right here is for the top. And then uh, just depending on what uh, O-ring you need here, is gonna determine uh, which one goes onto the injector. So the old injector has this O-ring right here on top, this one right here, and then this one as well on the bottom. So on the new one, the new one has the injector on the bottom already. So we need to put the three for the new one. So you have this top one goes in there like this. You have the green one that goes over like this. Once you get that on, just spin it. Make sure that's on there correctly. Make, there's, make sure there's no nicks or cracks or anything. And uh, we'll line up the thickness of this one. Well, you can see it's not that one. That's too thick. It looks like that one will work. So I'm comparing the new ga the new O-rings to the old O-rings on the old injector. So just match everything up. Okay, so next thing I like to do, I need I want to get some fresh motor oil, put it on top here, 
put it on the bottom here. That way it goes in uh, nice and easy when you put everything back together. So I'll just take the motor oil, put it on my finger, coat the top o-ring, coat the bottom one as well. Coat this as well because this o-ring goes into the intake manifold. So I didn't touch any of the other o-rings. That one ring is in place, that one is in place. So just take your new injector. As you can see, I'm just, uh, just going to push it into the fuel rail. Put some more over there. Just make sure that the o-ring does not roll over on itself when you do this. Okay. So it's in place. The new injector's in place. I don't want my oil to spill everywhere, so I'm going to cap that off, get that out of the way. I'm going to push the uh, new injector with the old ones and the rail. Everything goes in as one assembly. Pushing down. I'll get a flashlight and make sure that everything's in, in, in correctly. Make sure that everything's seated correctly and everything's flush on the bottom, which it is. So everything looks good. Everything looks good. Um, one thing to remember, when you put the uh, fuel line back in, put some oil on this one as well as the other one. That way it'll again go in a little bit easier. And if this O-ring is ripped or torn, go ahead, go to Honda, grab a new one. One thing I forgot to mention is once you get the vehicle running, you have the plenum back on, everything's dialed up. Uh, make sure you start the car and uh, let it run for a couple of minutes. Uh, make sure you don't have any fuel leaks, especially from these uh, fuel lines that you've taken off. If that O-ring got damaged on insulation, you'll see a fuel, uh, fuel leak pretty quickly. And if it's leaking fuel, do not drive the vehicle at all. You run the risk of catching the whole, uh, whole vehicle on fire. So working around fuel, just be extra careful. And when you put everything back together, uh, make sure you don't have any fuel leaks at all on, on startup. Put the connectors for your injectors back on. Make sure everything's tight. When you, when you put it on, you're gonna hear a click. And then go ahead, grab on the top and the bottom, pull up on it to make sure that it's in correctly. Put your two eight millimeter bolts back in. Put this fuel rail, put this fuel line in as well. Um, I'm not going to bore you with installation. If you've gotten this far, you know exactly how to put everything back together again. If you're putting a towel or paper towels down here, make sure you pull all these up before you put the uh, plenum on. You don't want those down there when you put everything, when you install everything back together. But uh, yeah, not too bad, not too hard. Just some patience, some time, and you can save yourself a bunch of money by watching Bundy's Garage.